Hi everybody, I am Jill Charles in the AAFE Training Center and today we might have a patient that looks familiar to you. This is Nora. Um, so we are filling Nora's lips today and uh, just to give you a little bit of her background. So she has unfortunately had um, filler migration on two separate occasions um, using the same product. So I'm starting to think that maybe it's more of a product issue. Um, so we have dissolved her lips completely and I gave her, I made her wait for five weeks. Um, because once those channels are sort of open, if you don't allow enough time, once you put the filler in there, it can just sort of follow those, those same channels and migrate again. Um, so we've waited five full weeks after we've dissolved her and now today she is back to be filled. Um, so I'm switching up the products a little bit. I'm using Juvederm Ultra today. I want something with a little more support than what she was previously getting. Um, it's not considered a heavy filler. I consider it a medium filler um, because she doesn't want a ton of volume and I think Ultra Plus would be too much volume for what she's really after. So we're gonna use uh, Juvederm Ultra and um, yeah, we're gonna do combination of a little bit of right angle technique to give her some vertical lip height um, and standard volume. So you can come on in and take a look. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start on Nora's lips. Um, so as I said earlier, we're going to work on a little bit of right angle technique. So um, basically that is a technique that we use to obtain a little bit more vertical height. So if you can see as I sort of lift up her lip here, that's what I'm trying to achieve, more lip show or vertical height. Um, so we're gonna use that technique to start. She's been numbed for about 10 minutes with a topical anesthesia. Open slightly for me. Um, so Nora's a patient we've treated multiple times in the past. She's just a pretty easy bleeder. So don't be surprised if you see lots of bleeding today. We fully expect it for her. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. So I always wanna make sure that my depth is appropriate for really any technique that you're using within the lips. Um, this is going to help avoid any potential for complications. And you can see I'm just placing those vertical struts of material to try and give her a little bit more show in the lip. I have backfilled my product into this Comfortox syringe. So this allows for more precise placement for, of the product. Um, I just like, I feel like I can place product exactly where I want it and I can control it a little better when I use these smaller syringes. So just take a look, her left side to her right side. You can already see she has a little bit more height and she has that really nice defined border where in her natural vermilion border is sometimes a little bit difficult to detect. It's not very defined. So that's why I like this technique for her because it helps give us a little more definition. We use the right angle technique, like I said, to achieve vertical height, but it's also really great for patients with asymmetries, which to be honest, happens to be probably most of our patients. Um, we're all fairly asymmetrical. Um, and the reason that I like this technique for asymmetries is you can, it's very easy to address an asymmetry when you're using this teeny tiny needle um, and this vertical technique because a lot of times like one of our cupid's bows will be higher than the other or lower than the other. Um, so when we're using this product vertically, we can try and help balance the sides. I generally don't like to deposit a ton of product in the corners of the mouth because I think it tends to look unnatural. So I just put literally the tiniest bit there in the corner just so that she gets that hydration from the hyaluronic acid, not really for much volume, just so that it'll pull a little bit of water for us. So now that I'm taking a look at her left side versus her right side, we were able to achieve a little bit more height there on the left. So I'm gonna come back and just do a couple of additional struts just to try and give her a little bit more support here before um, we'll move to the bottom. Okay, Nora. Uh -huh. She's always a very good patient. You can see she hasn't flinched. 
The only time I've really seen her look uncomfortable was when we had to dissolve the filler. That hyaluronidase burns quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty uncomfortable for her, as it would be for anybody. So those look a little bit more even to me. I like that with what we've just added to the top. So on the bottom, I think I'm just gonna do some standard volume. She has a really beautiful bottom lip. This is her natural anatomy. You can see she has these really pretty pillows, the tubercles of the lips. And I, I don't wanna change that um, because I think it's really beautiful. All right, now we are going to move to the bottom. Um, we did some right angle technique in the top lip and I think that we achieved some really nice vertical lip height. You can see she has more lip show. So when we look straight onto her, how much lip tissue can we actually see? How much of the pink lip? Um, so we're gonna move to the bottom. And again, I'm just going to sort of accentuate these really pretty pillows that she has naturally there in the lip. Um, and then we might come back and fine tune a little bit on the top, but we'll just sort of start with the bottom here. So I'm using the AFE uh, V to M technique now. And this is the technique that we like to use to help um, accentu accentuate those sort of pillows that she has in the lips, the lip tubercles. So I'm placing product here. Again, still using my Comfortox syringe because this allows me to place my product just really precisely exactly where I want it. Can you turn towards me a little bit? Thank you. Keep in mind the hyaluronic acid does hydrate the lip. So even if I'm not putting a lot of material in the corner of her lip, I want to at least put some in there so that she gets the hydration that she's gonna have um, elsewhere in the lip as well. So I'm just putting like literally drops of material in the corners of her lips so that way we can get that hydration. I'm just gonna grab some gauze and just sort of massage the product a little bit. I don't like to massage too much as I go along because it will cause um, the product to start to pull some water and swell. But so far, they're coming along, they're looking really pretty. I'm pretty happy with them so far. Coming back to the top, we're just adding a little bit of standard volume at this point. Open slightly for me, thank you. You doing okay? Hmm. So because we've had this issue with her having this migrated filler in the past, I'm probably gonna go pretty slow with her. Um, so, so far we've only used about a half a syringe and I'm probably gonna stop for the day. See her back in about two weeks, let these heal, um, just because I wanna be sure that they're gonna be perfect. Sometimes filler migration can happen for a, a number of different reasons. It can be product selection, it can be technique, it can be injector, um, it could be the patient, so maybe they leave your office and they don't follow your post-op instructions um, and maybe they're using their lips excessively or whatever it is that they're doing and it's causing that product to sort of move out. But one thing we do know is that placing too much product at once can force the product out of the lip because it just has nowhere to go. Um, so trying to give you a good look if it would stop bleeding a little bit, but you can see here I think, like I said, I think we'll sort of call it a day. All right, we have just finished Nora's lip enhancement. Come on in and take a look. 
I'm really happy with the shape and the amount of volume that we were able to achieve. So you can see now she has a little bit better balance. Um, previously, her upper lip was quite deficient um, and we restored some of that balance. Um, and now we are going to see her back in about a week and we'll finish off that top lip. Again, I'm being really, really cautious due to her history of filler migration. Um, I don't want to put too much in there at once. So um, anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.